thank you all so much for joining us here today. We're so excited to have you all here and so excited to be supporting such an amazing candidate um, as Ashley Carson Cottingham for, or for Marion County Commission position three. I believe um, that we're planning on starting with Rep. Alonzo Leon. All right, sounds great. So I'll do a quick introduction for Rep. Alonzo Leon and make sure everyone that I'm gonna do my best to unmute you all so that when Rep. Alonzo Leon is done speaking, we can all clap and cheer um, and try to make sure we're having a kickoff that would be just as fun as if we were in person. Um, so Rep. Alonzo Leon is a fierce advocate for all our communities here in Salem and specifically brings a really incredible equity lens to the Oregon um, State Legislature. In her role as a legislator, she was key in passing several pieces of legislation that look to increase equity across our entire state. Thank you so much for joining us today, Rep. Alonzo Leon. I think you can go ahead and get started. Awesome. Thank you so much for the invitation. Go, Ashley. <laughs> um, for those who don't know me, I'll just uh, re reiterate my name. I'm, I'm Teresa Alonso Leon. I uh, represent a House District 22, Woodburn through the north part of Salem. I was first elected in 2016, and I am currently running for my third term in office. I serve as chair of the House Education Committee, a member of the Joint Ways and Means Subcommittee for Education, and I'm a member of the um, healthcare committee. I first met Ashley when she became the aging and people with disabilities director for the state of Oregon. I got the opportunity to hear about the important work she was doing when she would appear before the health, uh, human service and housing committee multiple times to present on her program. With her amazing leadership skills, she was able to ensure the sustainability of Medicaid programs for people who are homebound, and she ensured the budget cuts had the least amount of human harm possible. I am so proud of Ashley's dedication to make to thinking outside the box to better serve um, our elders, uh, people with disabilities, and communities that we um, that are underserved. <laughs> for me, um, I just want to say. Um, that uh, um, folks who are part of our elder community have a special um, place in my heart and love, love, love that um, Ashley um, is also fighting for them. Uh, Marion County has been led by, uh, well, far too long by conservative folks and we know who they are. Um, it's time that we, you know, get somebody progressive and somebody who's ready to lead um, we know that we've had some city council members step in who um, who are um, have the same similar values as a lot of us do, but it's time for Marion County Commission to hold uh, somebody with um, the amazing leadership skills that Ashley brings to the table. Um, and I'm excited to support her. I'm excited to um, do everything I can so that she wins. Um, when Ashley was the program director of DHS, she established dedicated positions and equity plans to ensure that BIPOC individuals were served and uh, served with her program um, and acknowledging that there's um, that we need to deal with a lot of systemic and structural racism. Uh, we need more people like Ashley who are committed, committed to dismantling um, systems of oppression and serving uh, the needs of BIPOC Oregonians. Ashley has also taken steps to make sure her campaign is accessible to many of our community members that speak Spanish by creating bilingual campaign materials and creating a website for her campaign that is also bilingual. Really proud of that and I think it's a, it's a great lesson for other candidates to have um, because we are all serving diverse communities. Ashley is a candidate that's been fighting for our, our vulnerable and marginalized communities from day one and we need someone like her that's willing to address issues head on and take action instead of ignoring the problems. As a legislator and chair of the House Committee on Education, one of my main priorities is to create a learning environment um, where Oregon you know, focuses on allowing students to feel safe. Just since previous legislative session, Rep Alonzo Leon, I think you went on mute accidentally. Sorry about that. Oh, I didn't touch go. my my device, so I don't know how that happened. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. It's okay. It's okay. Um, so let me start from, uh, I don't know what part I ended. Let's see. 
Um, I'll just start with my last bullet point. Ashley is a candidate that's been fighting for our vulnerable and marginalized communities from day one, and we need someone like her that's willing to address issues head on and take action instead of ignoring the problem. As a legislator and a chair of the House Committee on Education, one of my main priorities is to create learning environment in Oregon education that allows all students to feel safe. Just in the previous legislative session, I introduced a bill that would, uh, that would have created a task force to look at better ways to support underrepresented students in higher education. Ashley has a track record of advocating for our communities and is committed to prioritizing the safety of our students. Just the other week, she advocated to the school board for the removal of uh, student resource officers in our schools and is a strong supporter of decreasing inequities and barriers across all our systems. Additionally, Ashley's platform is dedicated to supporting our community through housing affordability, supporting homelessness, um, excuse me, supporting homeless Oregonians, and urban and rural growth uh, job, excuse me, and urban and rural job growth. She is willing to take the appropriate steps to protect affordability for everyone in the community as Marion County's economic and population continues to grow. She is also going to take a multifaceted approach to uh, permanent housing that includes support to address underlying issues that lead to homelessness. With such a well-rounded platform, I know um, she has all Oregonians in mind. Finally, Ashley has put in the work to gain the tools to understand how to run for office and how to be a strong leader. Ashley is one of my Emerge sisters, meaning she's graduated from a seven-month long training program that is dedicated to preparing women who are Democrats to run for office. So I know she has the skill sets, she has the chops, she has the ability to be an amazing county commissioner that all of us can be proud and uh, wanting to work with her. Um, join me and celebrating her awesomeness and wanting to um, get her elected so that we have um, more women <laughs> in this uh, county commissioner position. Because right now there's, three men that have been there for far too long. And it's time to get somebody new with lots of energy and opportunities to um, create programs that are inclusive. And um, I'm excited to support Ashley. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rep Alonzo Leon. Um, I think we will move to Senator Gelser giving some remarks. Thank you so much, Rebel Alonzo Leon. We really appreciate your time here. Have a good rest of your night. I heard Thank you had a you. crazy day. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so <laughs> much. Bye. Bye. All right. So we're going to move to State Senator Sarah Gelser, who's going to share some more remarks about how wonderful Ashley is. Um, Senator Gelser has been serving in our state legislature since 2005 and has been a senator, I believe, since 2010. Um, and in her time, am I right? Did I get it right? Uh, 20, 2015. Got it. Okay. Um, in her time serving on the legislature, she's been key in finding solution for children and their families and is a known advocate for survivors. Um, senator Gelser, would you like to share your remarks about Ashley? I would thank you so much, and it is always an honor to get invited to the same thing that one of my favorite legislators, Representative Alonso Leon, is. And I know she's already left, but I just can't say enough about her, and I'm sure that she is the representative in many of your districts, and she and Ashley will be a power team. So uh, Rep. Alonso Leon uh, talked a lot about Ashley's professional background, and what she's been able to accomplish as the administrator of a massive budget in a, in a state agency, um, her focus on equity and the things that she's been able to do. And I think certainly whenever we look at candidates that are running for anything, we want people that are smart. We want people that know how to get things done. We want people to have a track record of accomplishments, not just saying things, but doing things. We want people who are well-connected and know how to talk to people, but a lot of people can do that. Ashley has all of those things, but she has something else that I think is the most important thing uh, when you're looking for the types of candidates that we can all get really excited about. Um, and I'm excited about Ashley, even though I live in Benton County, because Marion County is important to me, and Ashley is the type of candidate I'm about to describe. 
does not matter how smart, how accomplished, how funny, how well-connected or well-spoken you are if you don't have really great values that you are grounded in and are willing to live and lead from even when it's difficult. And when I first met Ashley, that is the person that I got introduced to. I got to see her in a moment of, of crisis and what I saw her do was in that moment of crisis, reach to what her values were and lead from those. Uh, what had happened was that she was uh, new to, to DHS. She had, well, not new to DHS, but she was new in the, in the position as the director of APD. And um, in my role, I chair the Human Services Committee and I ask a lot of questions about DHS and I talk a lot about vulnerable people. And sometimes that puts me in a difficult place with DHS, but the secret is I really enjoy my relationships with the people that are at DHS and want to maintain those. Mm -hmm. And the issue of safety for uh, elderly people in care came up and there was a, a new report and a reporter had contacted me about the number of elderly, especially low income elderly people that had died and not been reported and had uh, been associated with abuse. And it was a pretty, um, you know, it's the type of headline that creates a crisis and can be very difficult for a new director. I didn't know that that information wasn't public yet. I was interviewed about it and it was this big splashy straight at five o'clock kind of a thing. So that broke and I had, I think what was one of my first official meetings with Ashley moments later and my stomach hurt, I felt awful. Uh, I walked in and I said, Ashley, I want you to know this isn't my practice. I don't mean to do these things these ways. I'm so sorry. And Ashley took my breath away because instead of either saying something polite that also made it clear that she was really angry stood back and said, well, what I'm really sorry about is that poor people and elderly people and people of color die and nobody cares about it. So if people are gonna talk about that, that's the first step to doing that. How do we talk about it more? And she just took this place where she was very vulnerable and saw that the story wasn't about her. It was about the work that she was doing, the people that she was serving, the people that she was putting out there. And she does not put herself um, or her reputation or her professional success in front of what she knows is right or the reason that she gets up in the morning to go to work. After that, I got to sit with Ashley and watch her do her work firsthand. I got to see her in committees, but I also got to sit next to her in a boardroom at the Oregon Healthcare Association uh, where um, she was advocating for changes in memory care against some, a really powerful organization um, whose job it is to throw up every roadblock in the world. And Ashley uh, was firm and strong and made of steel and never flapped, never faltered, never hesitated to keep focusing on what was right. She, it didn't matter who told her that she needed to back down. If she knew what was, what was right, she kept moving forward. She does that on budgets. She does it on policies. She does it when she goes out and she improves regulation and accountability. And now she does it having left that agency going over to the office of the ombudsman, just bringing that knowledge and that passion in a different way to do what is again, the same work. She's done that work at the federal level, working alongside Bernie Sanders. She's done that work at the state level, running one of the largest agencies in the state. She is now doing that as an advocate on the front lines in the ombudsman's office. And now she's going to go and do it where she's setting the policy and creating the vision that we have in a community that needs voices that are ready to speak to the challenges of inequity, the wrongs of inequity, and what we can do to change it, regardless of the consequence. Marion County has needed that for a long time. Marion County needs it now more than ever. And there is nobody that can do that better than Ashley. And I am confident she will not back down from any challenge and she will never step away from the values that you know that she has. And there are not a lot of leaders like that. She's a one of a kind and, um, Please support her. Go Ashley. I can't wait to attend, hopefully not your virtual election night celebration party, but you know, that's probably where we're at. Thank you, Ashley, for letting me be part of this. Thank you so much. Thank Senator. you, Sarah. Yay, thank you so much.
for sharing your thoughts and for joining us tonight, Senator Gelser. We really appreciate all of your hard work, both at the state legislature, but also joining candidates like us down on the ground where you can help. Um, next up, I believe that we have Chris Hoy, who is a current Salem City Councilor and a former police chief. Um, Ashley and Chris worked together quite some time ago, but I will let I will save that story for him to tell you. Um, I'm working on finding him right now so I can unmute him. Here he is. Chris, go for it. Thank you. Uh, just to correct the record, I was never a police chief. I oh. was the under sheriff with the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office. So Got it. a little bit different, but thank you uh, for uh, allowing me a few minutes just to speak about my experience with Ashley. Ashley and I met, I don't even know how many years ago it was. It was a long time ago uh, on the governor's reentry council. We both worked um, and I, I'm still a member of that council trying to help uh, people who are incarcerated have better outcomes. And Ashley led a work group. Um, basically, her, her role was to lead a team of, I'm sorry, my dog just decided to bark. <laughs> her role, her role was to lead a team um, on aging populations because she was, she was with DHS at the time. And uh, the team worked to figure out how we could collectively better serve older adults while, while they were in prison and after they returned to our communities. And I don't know if you're aware, but Oregon has one of the highest proportions of prisoners over 55 in, in the US. And just like the older population in general, uh, older adults in custody have a difficult time finding work. They have increased, increased or complex health needs and require specialized transportation and housing. And Ashley did just a remarkable job leading that team, working with folks, stakeholders, law enforcement, people uh, in the criminal justice system, and did just such a fantastic job. And I could not be happier to support her in her run for Marion County Commissioner. Uh, we need her on the Marion County Commission. Thank you so much, Chris. I appreciate that. Yes. So now we have our candidate, Ashley Carson Cottingham, who is a fifth or generation Oregonian running for Marion County Commission, seat three. Um, who has been the Director of Aging and Disability for DHS and has an amazing background and is really excited to be running for this position. Ashley, we're very excited to hear from you. Why don't you tell us about yourself? Thank you, Miranda. Um, so first, I just wanted to take a second to introduce my amazing team before I launch into my stump speech. Um, so Miranda Miller, who's been leading this event, is my um, campaign consultant, and um, it's just been incredible. She just came on board a few weeks ago, but she is really whipping me into shape, getting me on the phones, and it's amazing to have her leadership. She's run some really successful campaigns in the past. Um, and then we have Emily, um, formerly Marchant, now Source, um, and she is our field director. So I'm really pleased to have her on board. She's been calling all the volunteers, getting people excited, get, keeping me organized. Um, and then I don't know if Rebecca is on. There she is, she is on. Rebecca Arce is also on our team. She is a um, volunteer um, and she is my equity and diversity director for the campaign. And I'm so excited to have worked with her at DHS and now have her on board with my campaign team. So just wanted to do those quick introductions to everyone. Um, so with that, um, my name is Ashley Carson Cottingham. You all know that already. And I am running for Marion County Commissioner. Um, as a small child of about seven or eight, I remember delivering Meals on Wheels with my grandparents to homebound seniors in Central Oregon. When someone would answer the door to receive what may have been their only meal of that day, I remember the loneliness in their eyes and the looks on their faces. When my grandmother died a number of years later, my grandfather really struggled um, and had quickly progressing dementia. He was over-medicated by a care facility physician, and he had a terrible reaction to the drugs, and he ended up in a Jerry psych ward. He was shaking. He was terrified. And I remember the look on his face. I also saw the others locked away in this facility. 
And as I tirelessly advocated to get my grandfather out of that institution, I noticed that the others had no advocate and they would likely die there alone. I remember the looks on their faces. It was at this moment that I vowed to make sure that vulnerable people receive the support and advocacy they need. And fighting for them is what I've been doing professionally ever since. From advocating in our nation's capital for healthcare reform, economic security, and elder justice, to most recently in our state's capital, I have been advocating for change. Older adults, people with disabilities, immigrants, people experiencing violence, families struggling with poverty, veterans with brain injuries, and those struggling with mental illness to deserve a life of dignity, safety, respect, independence, and good healthcare outcomes. We need leaders who don't ignore or brush over key facts who don't ignore widely recognized public health practices and who don't ignore our homelessness crisis. But that's exactly what we've seen happen on our county commission. So that's why I'm running. We need leaders who will publicly acknowledge systemic racism and want to address it and who make their processes and their decisions transparent to the public. Make no mistake, my opponent will continue the 40 plus year trend in the wrong direction for this county. When I see something wrong, I must act. I cannot forget the faces of people who need an advocate now. So if you want a county commissioner who cares about people, then please support me and vote for me Ashley Carson Cottingham this November. Thank you so much. Yay! Hello, Ashley. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Ashley. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Everybody, unmute yourselves. Let's cheer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Ashley. That was amazing. Hi, Ashley. <laughs> you have our vote, Ashley. Yay! Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, so it looks like we got a donation from Deb Patterson. She had to jump off, but she is donating a hundred to the campaign. So just wanted to get the fundraising ball rolling. Um, oh, and I Ashley, know we need you. <laughs> Thank you, Deb. <laughs> Thanks, Deb. See ya. <laughs> so next on our agenda, we have um, Terry O'Neill, who is going to be talking a little bit more about why Ashley is such an amazing candidate um, and sharing a little bit of her story about um, how she's worked with Ashley and what we need to be able to get Ashley into office. Go for it, Terry. Thanks, Miranda. Um, Ashley, good evening. It's so good to see your face. Um, I just moved to Oregon last September. I haven't even been here a whole year yet, uh, but I've known Ashley for a good 10 years. Um, I first worked with her when she was the executive director of the National Older Women's League, and I was the president of the National Organization for Women. Uh, we saw each other frequently sitting around countless numbers of tables um, advocating for justice for women in one way or another. And it was Ashley's passion, her real passion for serving people, for ensuring that older people have a voice, uh, that older women would have the dignity and the respect that they deserve in their old age. That was what I really remember about Ashley. Um, and you know, uh, leaders, leaders uh, made note of her as well. There was one, one particular time, uh, uh, a U.S. Senate, I think at the time he was the minority leader, <clears throat> he's now the majority leader. Uh, back in the day, it was uh, an official meeting and he looks at Ashley and he says something like, well, why are you leading the older women's league? You're not old. It's very classy. 
the entire room um, erupted in, in, in laughter. And Ashley completely held her cool. Um, you know, she, she, she didn't flinch. What she actually knows and what she, you know, always advocated for when she was in DC is that if we want the world to change, we have to work for people and on behalf of people uh, that don't otherwise have a voice. And we have to do it with passion and we have to do it with perseverance. So just another quick story. I was there um, uh, with Ashley when she took on a former U.S. Senator. Um, he, he wrote an extraordinarily rude uh, um, rant, just sent her an email that was a ranting thing about how dare she oppose changes, oppose cuts to social security, the social security system, and cuts to Medicaid and cuts to uh, Medicare. Um, and uh, it was, it, it actually, it, it was so over the top that um, I just had a lot of fun trolling him and calling Ashley and telling her the last thing that now was doing with this guy. And we, we kept putting things out to make fun of him. It was, it was amazing. It was really, it was really wonderful. Um, ultimately, you know, the White House actually apologized on behalf of this senator uh, to Ashley for his uh, sexist and ageist um, remarks to her. So I have known Ashley for quite a while, and I know that uh, she will lead um, as the Marion County Commissioner, just as she always has, with passion. Uh, she will persevere for those who don't have a seat at the table and whose voices have been silenced for so long. Um, but here's, here's the key part. Ashley needs our help to do it, right? Um, and so, and, and, and I'm gonna show you, tell you all how you can uh, how you can help her make the changes that, that we all need to see in this state. Okay, we need contributions. I'm gonna be asking you for some very big bucks and, and that's because that's what she needs in order to win this election. And before you say, ooh, I can't write that big of a check tonight, think about spreading it out over five months. We have, you know, four or five months till the election, just spread it out over five months and it's not so bad, right? Um, I'm, I think about giving a thousand dollars. If you spread it out, it's maybe $200 a month. It's much more doable. Think also about reaching out to your own networks. You can give or get a thousand dollars. It doesn't all have to come out of your own checkbook. Reach out to your family reach out to your friends, reach out to your coworkers if you're, if you're comfortable talking to your coworkers uh, about it. Go through your networks and try to raise money for Ashley. This is an important election. This generally, for all the elections we have coming up in November, this is probably the most important time to vote in our lifetimes. This is a moment when we all really need to step up. So I'm gonna ask right now for people to raise your hand if you are willing to donate $1,000, make a commitment for $1,000 for mm -hmm. Ashley. And Mar Miranda, you're going to, what we want them to put their name in the chat for $1,000? Yeah, I'll put your name in the chat. If you know how to use the raise your hand function, um, you can do that as well, which is you just click the three, if you hover your mouse over um, the three lit over your screen, there's three little dots and you can click it and choose to raise your hand. So if anyone wants to donate $1,000, even if it's over five months, you can raise your hand or donate, or send me your name in the chat if you don't feel comfortable raising your hand. You said that. Great. And also in the chat, you can, I think uh, Miranda, somebody put the, uh, the link that's right there in the chat. You can yes. sit here and, yes. and look at all the other amazing people who are making donations. You can just click the link and make your donation right now while we're speaking. So I've asked for $1,000. I'm going to give everybody a chance to make some kind of a donation. So anyone who is willing to donate $750, $750, raise your hand, go online, click that link and make that donation and then let us know tell us in the chat you know that that um that that you gave something donate a pie yeah pies that I can all right okay okay everybody how about five hundred dollars that's just a hundred dollars a month over five months or it's only a hundred dollars out of your pocket and then Four more people giving $100 each. You know four people, you can call them up and hit them up, it's for a good cause. And since it's not for you, it's for Ashley, it's much easier to ask for money 
for somebody else. So somebody wants to raise your hand, go and click $500. $500. All right. We Yay. have a $500 right. plus um, Thank donation. So Thank you. All right. All right. Okay. We're, we're keeping going. If you only have $50 a month, um, or if you can give 50 and get four of your friends to give another 50, that's $250. That's, we, we need that. And too. Chong Yay. All right. We got, we got donations. $250. Correct. Thank you. To $50 a month. Thank you so much. Who was that? Say it again. Uh, Sean and Mary Nickus. Thank, Thank you, you, Sean and Mary. You guys also rock. Chris and and Bill Chris. And Bill and Nancy Chase for 250 and Nancy, thank you. Thank you so much. This is wonderful. Okay, now we're getting stuff that's even more doable. $100. $100, that's 20 bucks a month. Or get your friends to donate. You know, we're mostly not going out to restaurants these days. So we're kind of saving some money. So yeah, you can come up with $100. Who wants to donate $100? Make that pledge. We've got a lot of 250s coming in. Marsha Kelly, thank you so much. Karen Packer. Shirley Harlan from the OWL board, national board, coming in at 25 a month for the next month. Thank you, Shirley. <laughs> We've got a whole bunch more. We got um, some folks donating 100. Thank you, Eileen and Laurie and Karina will do 250. Look at this, guys. Excellent. And Nelly is uh, giving 100. And Andy, you guys are amazing. Keep it up. Keep it up. And I really appreciate so many of you that have joined tonight have already contributed um, to my campaign, which I greatly appreciate. It's um, the reason I'm able to bring Miranda on, Emily on, and um, I think Paige Hook, another candidate that's on this call, is talking about, you know, what is 750 by you? Um, the voter pamphlet statement, um, and then we're really trying to raise money for our first mailer. Um, we have to reach 60,000 voters to win, um, or 60,000 have to vote for us. We have to reach more than that because not everyone will vote. So the cost of mailing is really expensive and that's where a lot of our funding will go. So I really appreciate the support. Thank you all so much. Anyone wants to give $50 or $10 or even $5, whatever you can give, we will really, we will take it. We'll be thrilled to have it. Really appreciate all your help. And um, let me just make a last pitch. Oh, good. We got, we got Melissa for $50. Any $50 and $10 and $20? Yay. Um, different. Thank you so much. Yay. Oh, Pinky, what are you going to donate? I have, I have two things. And I've been, and I wanted to give away some money, so you can have all of this. Oh my gosh! Thank you, Frankie. <laughs> you are the best. You are the very best. Let me give this into one hundred bill. All right, that's a. <laughs> okay, you got one on it. Yeah. All right, we have Sarah Gel Senator Gelser <laughs> donating seventy-five, and you know what? Let's write me down for twenty dollars for the next five months because. Great. That's definitely something I can do too. Great, 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 everybody. Thank you all so much. Um, and by the way, uh, in addition to giving or in lieu, if you, can, if you really can't give any money, you can always donate some time. Phone banking is something that uh, is always needed. It's really important. It's the second best way to reach voters besides going door to door. And right now we can't go door to door. So phone banking is key. Um, any kind of, if you take an hour, take two hours, take an hour a week to, to get on the phone bank. And I think, Miranda, you said that there's going to be a phone bank right after this is over, right? There is. Yeah. So actually, right around seven o'clock, we're going to start an hour of phone banking. We're going to give y'all a quick training to anyone who's interested in joining us for phone banking. Um, and it'll be super easy to do. No really experience required. And I know that Emily is also set up um, a recurring phone bank that we're having every Monday night. And I think we're also gonna um, work on having a recurring lit drop where we don't knock on folks' doors, we just go and drop lit so they have information about Ashley that's been minim minimally handled. Um, so we're all staying, stay staying safe, but everyone has information about it, so yeah. That's great. You know, that's what it is. We, this country really needs to change. We need to change our country. Every one of us has a role to play. Um, 
Ashley's role is going to be very important. She needs to be commissioner of Marion County. Um, and we all can play our parts in helping Ashley get to where uh, we need her to be. So thank you all so much. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the support. And thank you, Terry. We're, Oregon is so lucky to have you here now. <laughs> no, I'm thrilled to be here. <laughs> Well, thank you all so much. Terry, thank you so much um, for your help this evening. Um, we're just gonna move into a quick Q&A uh, session with our candidate, Ashley. There are a couple questions that folks submitted um, prior to the event, so I'll start with those, but then I do believe we're planning on opening it up just for a couple short questions right before seven o'clock, um, and then we'll get started on phone banking. So Ashley, I think the first question that folks had for you this evening was, Salem is going to create a climate action plan to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. Do you believe that Marion County needs to do their part to address the climate emergency? Thank you. Um, yes, I definitely, am I unmuted? Yes. Um, I think we do need to do our part as a county. I think climate change is very real. Um, I actually believe in the science um, and believe that we have to do our part to reduce harmful um, carbon emissions. I think there's a number of ways that we can go about doing that. Um, I think we need to look at better transportation options, um, expanding those. A lot of the way that you get around our county is by car. Um, and so continuing to expand our transportation options, um, I think I mean, COVID-19 has been horrific, but it has shown us that we can do telecommuting successfully. Um, I think if we can keep that going long-term, we'll be able to reduce some of those harmful carbon emissions. Um, I think we could expand some of the ride sharing, um, definitely work to improve the safety of our streets in all the communities in our counties. Um, and then I think one thing we could do to really lead by example is the county actually has its own fleet of vehicles for um, all kinds of projects and all, you know, all of the work of the many departments of the county. And we could work to convert all of those to um, hybrid right away, but maybe to a completely electric fleet by 2035. So there's a number of things we could do like that um, just to chip away at the problem and lead by example. Great, thanks Ashley. Um, moving on to our next question. Other than COVID, what do you think are the three most important issues facing the county? And what thoughts do you have regarding how you would like to address them? So I think the, the one of the biggest issues is homelessness and our um, unhoused population here in the county. Um, I know, you know, I live in downtown Salem, so I see the problem daily. Um, but, you know, we we just haven't addressed all the underlying causes, and so um, we get to winter each year, or the rainy period of our year, and people don't have anywhere to go. Um, we need to invest in low barrier shelters. We have people who have. Um, drug addiction and or partners or animals and so they refuse to enter a shelter because they have those things are really important to them so we need to remove those barriers get people into treatment expand treatment options um, make the shelters accessible we have very few women's shelters here um, and then you know invest in a navigation center which Unfortunately, you know, was something that we were going to be doing um, with the support of the legislature and then, um, you know, the Republicans walked out and we didn't get that funding. And so we're back to sort of square one and trying to address this issue. I think the unique thing that I could help with with my skill set is bringing together um, all of the, the different leaders across, you know, all of the levels of government to try to come up with some I'm comfortable working with our amazing city councilors, you know, our mayor here in Salem, working with leaders in Kaiser, working with leaders in Silverton, working with the legislature, um, and really sitting around the table and coming up with the solutions. We know that we can do this. It just takes hard work and coordination. And um, the other issue is our mental health supports. Um, 
Marion County is unique in that we are situated, um, you know, around Salem. And Salem is where we have had um, our mental institution hospital now. And so we see this intersection of trying to reduce the, inst um, the, the fact that we institutionalize people. We don't want to do that. So we want to reduce the number of people going into the state hospital, but yet there isn't anywhere else for them to go. So they're turned away from the state hospital, and then we don't have enough supports in, in around Salem. And so I really wanna make sure that we're investing in mental health supports that wrap around the person. Um, and we don't have that right now. It takes very intensive case management and a multifaceted approach of working with the legislature, with city government, state government, county government to, to fix these problems. And I am excited to bring people around the table to really make change happen. Lastly, I would say jobs. I mean, I um, COVID related also, people are losing their jobs. Um, we're hearing of more and more layoffs every day. Um, the uncertainty of our state government budget is up in the air. Um, and so I want to roll up my sleeves and figure out how we can better address um, the crisis that we're in um, and then get people back to work. Great. Thank you so much for sharing your priorities for Marion County. Um, I'm going to start taking some questions from folks. So why don't you just start messaging me, Miranda Miller, directly um, if you have any questions you'd like to ask of the candidate. And while I finish asking these pre-asked questions that we had folks fill out, um, I'll just kind of scroll through those questions if anyone has any. So our next question for you, Ashley, is um, in general, what do you think needs to change as far as how the county operates? For example, how would you have responded differently to the pandemic and to the Black Lives Matters protests? Um, so that's a great question. I think that um, my leadership style is incredibly transparent, and I don't think that anybody can make a decision on behalf of other people unless they've brought stakeholders to the table. And what I've seen with this county commission is that the stakeholder group is a very select sort of insider group. And so my priority would be to ensure that we have true stakeholder engagement and that you look around and ask yourself, who's not at the table? Who's not been part of this conversation yet relies on some of these services or needs these services and supports? So I would ensure that our meetings were, um, you know, open. So they meet still in person. They meet in the middle of the day. You know, that's not accessible. So we need to change the meetings to different times of day. Maybe we have them on the weekends so that people can come then or at night so that working people can come. Um, <clears throat> and that you raise the issue prior to having made a decision about it so that there's true opportunity for public engagement and input prior to making a decision that impacts people. Um, with Black Lives Matter, um, I think that I don't know that we've heard a single word about Black Lives Matter from the current county commission. Um, and, you know, as I said in my um, remarks, you know, we have to elect people that are willing to address systemic and structural racism head on. Um, that starts by acknowledging that it's here, apologizing for any role you've had in it, and then listening and learning and attending meetings, show up, you know, show not, don't show up because there's something in it for you, but show up because you care enough to undo the structural and systemic racism. So that's how I would be different than what we have right now. Great. Um, we have gotten a couple questions from folks that are interested in hearing from you. Um, I am going to ask one last quick question that we had from someone who like asked this previously, and it is um, how we are reaching out to non-affiliated voters on your campaign. So we are building out, um, thanks to my awesome team, a robust um, plan to engage 
as many people as we can across this, the county. We know there are more registered Democrats than Republicans just slightly in this county. And so to win, you have to get a bunch of those unaffiliated voters. So we will be doing targeted outreach, um, looking at how people voted in past elections that are unaffiliated, making sure we're getting to the people who are likely to, to lean Democratic, but also talking to voters that maybe aren't because I think um, people are fed up. People are struggling with job loss and COVID. And, um, you know, I think that my campaign and being county commissioner, I'd have a lot to offer those folks as well. Great. Sorry about that. It took me a second to unmute. Um, thank you for sharing. Um, so it looks like our next question is from Sean and Mary, um, and they're interested in hearing about an update on the county health clinics and reproductive health services and how or if we can get those services turned back on? That's a great question. Um, so what I know is that the county engaged a consulting firm um, about a year ago and looked at eliminating, I believe it was vaccinations and then reproductive family planning and birth control services. And the consulting firm recommended essentially how you would go about eliminating those programs over time. Um, and, you know, I, for the sake of um, streamlining or, you know, there are already enough providers in, in the community to offer those services, I don't know why exactly the study was done. Um, but the result is that the county commission in June started sending out letters to people who had relied on those services, reproductive health care and family planning services with the county. So they just received a letter in June saying, you don't get it, come here anymore, find another provider in the middle of a global pandemic. Um, so that's not what the consulting firm recommended. Um, I believe that we must turn those services back on, um, that it's totally inappropriate to be sending a letter to women across our county telling them they don't have their provider anymore right in the middle of a pandemic. Um, I think you should do everything you can as a leader. One, regardless, of whether, regardless of whether it's duplicative service or can be offered somewhere else, you don't do it in the middle of a global health crisis. Women's health care matters. And um, you also, <laughs> the sign fell by Miranda. <laughs> um, so, you know, I would do what I can to figure out how do we make sure people are served. Um, I know that the federally qualified health center in our area has, um, has capacity to take women on. So I'd wanna do a lot of education to make sure that they can receive health care. And I plan to do that with some of the other women who are running for office right now. Um, Deb Patterson, who joined us earlier, um, Jackie, our city counselor, um, to talk about um, where women can go because they're, they're, they weren't expecting this and it's not okay. Great, thanks for answering that question. And thanks John and Mary for the question. Um, next question, we only have time for a couple more, um, but the, one of the first questions we got was, will you advocate and vote for funding and expanding rural broadband access to East Marion County? Um, and we have a comment from Paige saying that her daughter can't even download PDF attachments and cell service is non-existent in many areas. Yeah, this is something um, absolutely I would be advocating to expand um, broadband to all parts of the county. It's unacceptable that um, we don't have um, accessible internet across this county in the year 2020. And we're expecting people to homeschool children um, through online curricula. We, you know, we have to get this fixed. Um, I know it's a problem that goes back a long way. Um, but there are creative solutions. I've been learning about some of those. Um, the community of independents, not in our county, you know, basically put together their own company um, through government bonds and funding to be able to offer their, um, the people living there, internet service. And um, I think we have to explore any and all options um, to get internet to the far reaching parts of our county. Great, thank you so much for sharing. Okay, last question, and then we're gonna move to phone banking. 
Um, Stacy is concerned about unsheltered folks and COVID when we move into the colder seasons. How can the county keep these folks safe in the fall and winter? Yeah, I mean, I think that's um, a very tough question and something that, you know, if I was on the commission right now, if I was a county commissioner, I would be working tirelessly to, to find solutions for that problem. Um, you know, when I'm elected, I will work um, with various leaders across city, state, um, and county government to figure out how we can invest in all the types of shelters that we need to keep people um, warm and dry. Um, we have resources that I know um, the city has been exploring, and I think some of those are just within reach. Obviously, funding is a challenge, and like I mentioned, the legislature was going to be investing to help us get there, um, and the Republicans walked out of session, and that didn't come through, and now we're, you know, in a recession because of a global pandemic. So elections matter, um, and I think we're going to have to get really creative, but uh, bottom line is that people need shelter, and I think that all elected officials should be doing everything they can to make sure that people aren't sleeping in the cold. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you everyone so much for sharing your questions and concerns about Marion County. Um, we have lots of people in the chat saying go Ashley and amen. So thank you for sharing your thoughts. Um, now we are going to move into phone banking. So I'm gonna let Emily take over. Um, anyone that's interested in hanging out to learn more about phone banking, who wants to phone bank with us tonight is happy, is welcome to stay on, um, regardless of whether or not you phone banked before. But if you're not interested, we totally understand. We'll be doing recurring phone bankings and we'll probably hit you up to help us in the future. Um, so Emily, do you wanna take it away? All right, can you all hear me? And for those of you dropping off, thank you so much for being here tonight. Um, I really appreciate the support. It's so wonderful to see all of the friendly, smiling faces and just your support is so heartwarming and I'm really looking forward to winning in November. Thanks to all of you. Absolutely. Thank you for running, Ashley. Thank you. I know that this campaign has major people power because everyone told me to only expect 25 to 30 people and we had 53. I That's asked how you know. Yeah. I'll vote for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Frankie. <laughs>